so i'm working on the ceiling cut. i'm going to start the ceiling cut in and i'm going to start from the corner over here. i've got my brush. just going to be dipping my brush into my my bucket of paint. and i actually like to just tap the brush my brush on the side of the bucket and to make sure it's not going to drip. so i'm going to dip into my paint tap it on the side and then while i'm holding my brush if you turn your brush it won't ever drip. but if you hold your brush like this eventually the paint's going to sag and begin to drip. but when i'm moving it to wherever i'm going i'm actually going to be twisting my brush in a twisting motion and when i'm going to start in a corner and when i actually start this corner i'm going to i use a two and a half inch angle sash brush so it comes to a point on the end and with that point i could work it up into the corner and i'm just going to slowly work it to the corner to the point gets right in that corner and then i'm going to start my cut in and move away from me just like that so i'm going to dip my brush in get some paint on it load it up and then just work it along my edge and if you go really slow doing your cut ends your line's going to be more crooked so the faster you can go the straighter the line you can make obviously that takes a lot of practice to go faster but the more you do it the faster you can go so one thing i've learned is if i can make my cut in really quick and use a stiff brush i'm going to have a nice straight line so i'm going to get my brush up here work it up into i start about an inch away from my my ceiling and then i'm going to work it up to the ceiling and i'm going to get it started and then i'm going to start running along my ceiling just like that and then after i cut it in one direction i go back and just make sure there was no miss spots and check my cut in like that and then eventually i'm going to take my nap and back roll my cut in up to about a half inch away from the ceiling so i'm going to get it up here and then i'll reach over here and i'll reach from this direction and move back to my other cut in i just created so i'm going to get it up there work it up to the ceiling and then a little bit about breathing once i get it to the ceiling i typically will hold my breath and then begin to draw my line with my brush i like to describe it as drawing the line because i'm actually drawing a line with a brush so get it up there hold your breath cut your line and then breathe again so get it up here work it up here and then hold your breath just like that i drew my line now there's a few little light pinholes and miss spots that the brush didn't get into because sometimes the brush going one direction will go over the top of some little hills and valleys so you just load your brush up again go back the opposite direction but when you go back the opposite direction to fill in those little pinholes you don't get near your cut in you'll stay about an eighth of an inch away from your cut in so now i got the cut in done i'm gonna go back and back roll it and now ideally somebody should be following you up and rolling this wall so you don't get what we call haloing and that's discussed in another subject but if you're doing it yourself, your cut ends, just go from you know, one wall at a time. So I'm gonna do my ceiling cut ends, then I'm gonna roll my wall and then move to the next wall. So I'm gonna be working my way this way. I'm gonna start from this side, work my way to this corner right here. I'm just gonna get my brush loaded up, get my bristles set, get them right up next to my ceiling, and now I'll begin drawing my line. I wanted to make this video because I wanted to, you know, uh, make it pretty Im a, a pretty important subject or pretty important tip to it, to doing ceiling lines. You actually get in a straight line. One of the most important things to get in a straight line is choosing the actual right brush for the paint you're actually using. If you don't have the right brush, if I got too soft of a brush for the paint I'm using, like this paint is a really thick paint. If I'm using too soft of a brush, it's really really difficult to get a straight line. So you got to really determine what type of paint you're using and use the right type of brush to go with that paint. Now if I'm using, you know, uh, a paint that's really thin, like an ultra deep paint, like a red paint, a uh, vibrant red wall or something, some of these uh, colors are really popular, then I'm going to want to use a, a really s soft brush that uh, that's going to draw myself a better line than a stiff brush. A stiff brush isn't going to be good 
with thin paints, ultra deep paints, because one thing, it won't lay out enough paint and it won't make a straight line. Once again, I'm painting, doing my cut ends here. I'm actually using an extremely stiff brush, the stiffest brush I can you know, find for this type of paint we're using that's really thick is a Sherwin-Williams contractor's brush. It's a two and a half inch angled sash brush and just so much of getting a straight cut in line is determined by, you know, you and whether you're choosing the right brush. Now, if you choose a brush that's too stiff for the paint, it's not going to lay the paint out properly. It's going to leave a lot of roping marks and um, light spots, so highs and lows if the brush is too stiff. So, you know, you as a painter, you're going to determine the type of paint you're using and use the proper brush. You can get just an all-around brush that'll work for most paints, like Purdy has an XL Glide brush that I like that's really good for um, for most paints. But when we're using this paint right here, Treasure Valley Eggshell, I like a really st stiff brush. You know, my philosophy is the stiffer the brush, the straighter the line you're going to be able to cut in. So I'm responding to questions from my YouTube subscribers here, and I got a question from Zach Neal, and we're going to answer Zach Neal's question here. And Zach asks in comments on one of my videos, and that's how to spray in tri interior trim and doors. And his question is, I'll read you his question, and it's, what do you do to minimize overspray? And then he says, I sprayed some doors in my basement, and the mist went everywhere. So Zach, in order to answer your question, I'm going to give you two little simple tips, and that's if it's pertaining to using an airless sprayer. One thing you can do is turn down the pressure, so less pressure will create less overspray. And then another thing is make sure you use a brand new tip. Using a brand new tip and lower pressure will help solve your problem.